Welcome back to Oakfield Farm for episode 17 with me, Mr. Sealy P. As another dawn rises in the east, we are on day three, midsummer. I fear I have unleashed a monster. <clears throat> I know I mentioned this in the last episode. Sorry, I keep clearing my throat and it's weird. I start talking. As soon as I start doing the video, I start talking and my th throat dries out. After a little while, it's fine. But it always does it straight off the bat when I start talking. So I apologise if I keep doing that, if it's annoying or not. Um, yes, I've unleashed a monster. Um, I've got some more stuff coming your way. I mentioned on an episode of um, the Valley of the Old Farm that uh, there was something coming challenger related to Oakfield Farm. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, Jason from Oakfield Arable Contracts that said he wanted to invest and want to invest a self-propelled sprayer. Um, it has arrived apparently down at the machine shop store, whatever you want to call it, the machinery store, probably that, um, that's ready to be collected. Um, we are on the next growth stage for some of our crops. I'm up, up at field 33A where we've got soybean in the ground. Um, so I thought, well, if I'm going to go and collect the new boom sprayer, which is fine, I can sell this one, which is also fine, but I've got a lot of fertiliser in this. So I thought rather than waste the fertiliser, which seems a bit daft, I'll get out here early in the morning use up the fertilizer once this tank's empty i can go and take this i'll sell it and i'll pick up the new self-propelled sprayer which will make life a bit easier Let's get cruise control on which is wonderful so that's available to pick up in the store um the the comment from mitch the other day about um letting me have a lone trial uh fent harvester i said fantastic thumbs up absolutely sounds brilliant I have been inundated after that episode when I said about probably needing another harvester. If I accepted everybody's offers, I think I'd have about 10 harvesters running um, and I don't have that many workers. So thank you to everyone that offered to lend, loan, lease harvesters to me. Um, and there are a few of you. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Barris being one of them. I'm going to get that to that in a minute. Um, but that, that's awesome so I'm, I thank you very much for getting on board with it all and kind of immersing yourself in part of the let's play it's absolutely brilliant um, so saying that I'm kind of was going through in my head all the different crops I've got and what I'm going to do with them and who I've got to give them to and sell them to and all that kind of stuff um, and I've planted soybean in the ground and corn um, I had a message from Jake um, Jake runs Jake's Chip Factory. That's not like fish and chips in the UK. Chips like crisps, like potato chips, a bit like gloss crisps. So we've got a bit of a bidding war, a bit of a competition going on here. Um, and competition's good in business, I like that. But, and there's another bit coming up as well in a minute, which will, again, it's quite amusing. I was just going to say you don't own this field and stop me spraying. Oh no, it's alright. Um, I think because the tractor's far enough away, I'm getting away with it. Um, yeah, Gloss Crisps do potato crisps. Jake's Crisp Factory do corn chips. Um, they're an American company. They've come over to Britain. They're branching out. They want to start making corn chips in the UK. So um, Jay, uh, Jake has asked me if I can provide him with 80,000 litres, I think it was, 80,000 litres of corn. He'll pay me, of course. Um, 170,000 I think it was he said he'd pay me. Let's see if I can get work on that. And I can check on my paperwork. Um, 80,000 litres of corn, £170,000. He said he would also supply me with a case, axial flow and header um, to help with the harvest. Thank you for the offer on that Jake but I think I'll be fine for harvesters. Um, but he said to sweeten the deal he'll throw in five sheep. Let's just throw them in. I hope he doesn't actually throw them but um, so there's going to be more sheep on the way. So I should get 50 sheep from AJ from Gloss Crisps, 5 sheep from Jake from Jake's Chip Factory for making corn chips. Um, I mean, basically, it makes no difference at all to what I'm going to be doing on the day-to-day, -day, but it does mean when I come to do the harvest, the corn 
is accounted for. Interesting one. Normally I use my corn, maize, whatever you want to call it, and do a big silage harvest. This time I'm going to actually use the corn. Um, so, yeah, interesting one. Um, moving on then, Barris. Barris at Machinery Store. Now, Mitch is from a competing machinery store, an agco store, who's offered me the fence. Barris sent me this message. Again, one of these weird coincidences, fate, whatever you want to call it. Didn't know about the other one, but here here goes. So this comes from Barris. It's a long one. So, he said, I'm pleased to, pleased to hear that you like the little red Massey and your new cultivator. He helped me source them both. Absolutely fantastic. Always a pleasure to work with you. Um, I would like to take this opportunity and inform you of some new practices with regard to your arable operations. Um, he has been in conversation with Sir David, as obviously he works for Sir David, um, about things that need to be done differently or I need to be doing differently or, you know, if Sir David says so, who am I, who am I to argue with Sir David? It's his land, it's his farm, I'm merely the farm manager. Um, probably because I'm spending his money uh, it, quite a lot of it as well actually um, anyway so carrying on <laughs> he's created a new online shopping service for me which again is going to make life easier and that's only available to selected customers of which I am now one thank you very much um, so yeah thanks to David you are now one of those privileged customers uh, also please be advised that Sir David ordered to revoke my previous discount arrangement I was supposed to, if I provide them with wheat, corn, whatever it was, any crop whatever literage I gave them I could get that on a discount that's not working come on, I think it's because the tree the other side um, that has been revoked but replaced with something else which is actually quite good it says you'll be granted with a 20% discount on any, uh, any machinery you purchase or lease um, however, Sir David still expects that you will sell the crops only to local buyers um, and not to anyone else. Let me get that on. At, um, at this point, I made him sure that you would never get sidetracked. He assured him I would never get sidetracked. Um, <laughs> and sell the crops to outside buyers, even if they approach you with any type of so-called great demand. <clears throat> Lee said about that the better um, so it does say I owe Barris a very good bottle of beer for that and I do um, all of your purchased or leased machinery from our store will be delivered to your main yard so you won't lose any of your precious time from your busy schedule fantastic third point now this is where it becomes a little bit I think because of the, the other machinery store getting involved and offering me a trial lease harvester for the harvest season um, so David is trying to entice me back I think um, so this is this is what it says um, yeah in order to convince you let's turn it again hang on a second so I've set a worker but sometimes it just um, doesn't do the turns particularly well sorry I know this is a lot of talking to start off I just want to make sure I don't forget anything flip that around Make sure you're aware of what's going on. No, that's not going to work, is it? Right, so. Let's go straight on. So in order to convince me, persuade me, that Oakfield Farm really does require some serious horsepower, I do have the big um, Massey Ferguson, but anyway. So David has also ordered me to do something quite extraordinary. I think ordered is probably a strong word. He's probably asked him sternly, possibly politely. Um... They've just received the delivery of a new showroom star, a showroom model to showcase and lure the local farmers into the machinery shop to buy machinery. Um, it's a brand new Challenger MT875E. Now, as far as I'm aware, it's the um, three meter version, I think it is. Um, so it's got a three meter track on it, wider stance kind of thing. I think because it's hilly, if you go sideways in the hill, it stops you tipping over, that kind of theory. Um, however, it seems that this beast will never get to see the showroom floor and instead will be delivered to your main yard. Okay, so David wants me to give you this as on an extended period demo 
till the end of next year, so the end of my second year. However, I had to persuade Sir David to get some type of demo or leasing fee from you in order to prevent the shop from losing too much on the Challenger. I'm sorry for that, but I also look after, have to look after the shop's profits. So you will only need to pay an annual fee for the Challenger. Just take her in for servicing in winter time so we can both service her and charge you with the demo fee. Please note I would really appreciate it if you buy it at the end of the second year because it will be written off as a total financial loss on the shop's records which won't do any good for Barris's bonus. Fair enough. Okay, so so from what I gather from that, when I go to the store next there's going to be a challenger sitting there, a showroom challenger. Plus there's going to be the um, Massey Ferguson boom sprayer. Just thinking how much I've got left on this what fields need to be sprayed next just become very aware that my timer didn't work on my uh, on my phone and I'm worried that I've missed some of the recorded on that which I might well have done um, so in editing something may pop up um, to explain all or some or none of which I've just said I don't know we'll see um, so yeah so there'll be those two bits of machinery um, I don't think the um, I think the Challenger can stay on the forecourt for a little while because I don't need it at the moment. Maybe around harvest time when we start hauling on hills and stuff like that it might be useful. But at the moment, probably not. It looks like our oilseed rape, canola, is growing fantastically here on the left hand side in field 34. Which looks absolutely wonderful. We should have sunflowers growing just over there as well. Um, field 21 that I bought, that's going to need spraying. And field 43, if the crops have come through the ground, the first shoots coming through the ground, that will need a spray as well. This is not going to do all of that. So if I head down to field 21, I'm going to spray field 21. Um, that I'll probably do off screen. Um, you'll notice there's lots of bits where... Oh, that's a point. Bales, what time is it? Hang on one second. Let's leave that one in. Jump the fence. What oh, chainsaw? The Wobster. 94.39%. Three hours to go and they will be fermented, which means they will be sellable in three hours. So just after 8 o'clock in the morning, they'll be ready to go. Awesome. Right. I have had a couple of suggestions and requests for doing stuff here at Oak Glen Farm. Unfortunately, as I've found on the Valley of the Old Farm, pigs are a money pit. I'm, they're just... I'm not going to make any money. I'm, I'm kind of... This let's play avoiding doing them. Yeah, just losing way too much money. It's a pity because it's a brilliant little farm here. But I just think pigs isn't the way to go. Not at the moment, but bearing in mind I haven't even got any sheep or cows yet. Um, is there any way to get into that field without going all the way around? No. There's a style there for the footpath, but that's it. Okay, right. I'm going to head around. I'm going to get into that field. I'm going to spray that, because that should be on its next growth stage. Um, and then once I run out of uh, fertiliser on this, I'll go and pick up the, uh, the Massey. We'll have a look at the uh, Challenger, if it's there. Oh, there's something else I was going to do as well. Something I've taken over to the store that I'm going to sell. Not everyone's going to be happy by it, but I will explain when I get there.
I finished field 21 and I had a little bit left to do a strip on field 43 oh there it is look you can tell it's a showroom model can't you pride of place and drive oh, I run over you drive down the road that's what you see that's enough to entice anyone in so that's a three meter version it's got these say wider axles not axle spaces but wider axles hmm MT875 what horsepower has that got what is the horsepower on that Where's the wide version? 3 meter. MJ800 875E. 646 horsepower. <clears throat> I don't own anything that requires that kind of horsepower. I don't think I can afford anything with that kind of horsepower. Wow, okay. Well, that's there. It's like Piccadilly Circus around here, look. Is there anything that's not here at the moment? Right, the Massey's here with the Tedder. I remember now. Oh, there we go. Massey Ferguson Boom Sprayer. Massey Ferguson 9030, is that? 9030. I think that's got the same width boom as that, I think. Although, I think the tank on this is a bit smaller. Nice narrows on it. That's going to be a lot better. But I don't think, the one thing on this one, I don't think you can adjust the track on this. You can't go narrower. Wow, look at the details on that. Crikey. Um, yeah, but anyway, so... That's from Jason. At Oakfield Arable Contracts. Investing in our future. Nice. Um, anyway, so, right, this is what's going to happen. I've had a few issues with this. I've had a few issues with the header catching on the ground as I've been going along and mowing it slows it right down that's not a major issue the header width is okay five meters or whatever it's 5.2 whatever it is problem is i can't get a tether to match and what i found when i was using it i did some cutting up past the stables um past six furlong stables the little house that's up a little bit further up past field 34. um and with this open if i'm mowing and tedding at the same time this overhangs a little bit either side and the problem is you either can't get to the hedge on one side or the other side the tedder is killing the grass knocking the grass back before i get a chance to mow it with that it's just it's just not working um this is a great little machine really really is a little bit underpowered for the hilly terrain as well which is probably the other reason why i'm deciding to sell it's 18 a bit and 14 a bit repair 36 pounds and sell okay what i'm going to buy in its place is the triple mower setup i had the side mower front and side mower i know this is ridiculous because i've only just i sold one lot and you know i sold that and that now i'm going to buy that back and buy that so let's buy that buy that money's down a little bit but oh that's the other thing I was going to sell I'm going to sell the wood chipper the wood chipper over there I'm only going to get half back and I said I'll make the money on it and every now and again I'll go over and do some wood problem is this time of year the wood's not worthless but it's very very you're not making any money on it and there's what 32 grand sitting in that wood chipper doing nothing I mean, I'm probably going to regret that come winter when I think, actually, I need to do some more logging. But I might do actual logging. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So there is money tied up in that. I might leave that for the time being, but I'm going to... This needs to be sold anyway. Keep doing that. So... This came with the farm. It's been a brilliant bit of kit. I did that kind of wrangle with do I get rid of it when we're first going to the farm and I didn't and I'm glad I didn't because it's a fantastic bit of kit 43 that's not bad so I'm actually I've come out ahead having bought the mowers back I'm up a bit so that's quite good 
Right, so I'm going to park this just for the time being. So I need to go back to the farm. Maybe as part of my kind of deal with machinery, maybe Barris will help out. So what can happen is on grass... Oh, that's another thing. <laughs> so I'm thinking of all these things. I'm going to buy field seven, grass field, I've decided. It's only about 15,000 to buy. And now I've just made that little bit of extra money. That's a no-brainer. So this will be a triple mower setup. I'll have this attached to this. All three attached to the front of the Massey because this has got the oomph to be able to do it on the front. So a triple mower on the front. Then I can run wind rower or tether on the back. And that width, I think that is 10 centimetres. That's an 8.3. And I think that comes in 8.4 so 10 centimeters short i should be all right hopefully i think but before i do any of that let's jump in this let's get it filled up let's go this way don't we Oop. come on there we go well, that's quiet whoa fancy That steering wheel sits high, doesn't it? Now, um, I have, for a little while, been watching um, Welker Farms. Um, Welker Farms, Inc. on YouTube. And obviously with the Welker Farms map by Mappers Paradise on its way, or being made, or, you know... It's in production at the moment. Um this has actually worked out quite well receiving this only because i was watching some the other day they did a new reveal of that new float truck sprayer this amalgamation like something from mad max it was incredible but they had an um apache boom sprayer which wasn't that different to this actually it looked quite a bit like that um but anyway uh, where am i going oh yeah fill this up I'm sure it's only a 3,000 litre tank, so not huge. And doing a field like Field 43, um, yeah, we'll have to do a few refills, I think. This money's not going to go that far. Get that beacon on. Yeah, so you can't adjust the track. I thought you could, unless I'm just doing that thing again where I'm being dim. But even if you can adjust the track, if you look at where the boom sits, that the boom sits directly above the wheels so even if I can bring the track in I can't adjust the boom width that's going to stay that wide what was fantastic well, I liked, liked watching um, Nick Welker on, on the farm with the Apache was that all of the different nozzles he had a load of switches um, and the switches related to different parts of the boom so it shut off different sections of the boom which meant that if you were going over a part that didn't need spraying or had been sprayed before or a patch that was not ready to be sprayed yet, you can flick the nozzles on and off and turn off certain sections of the boom. That was it's brilliant. Such a clever idea. Actually, I thought this was going to be a bit too wide for the road, but it's not, actually. Pretty good. Visibility's not great. He's going to pull out, isn't he? So I'm going to head back to field 43. I'm pretty sure that wiper is going to, or actually the multicoloured dial is going to be pretty much central. So I keep that central to the road. I shouldn't hit anything coming the other way. <laughs> Famous last words. This has got a pretty good top speed, 29. Anyway, yeah. So he was spraying at 14 miles now, I think he said. 14 miles now, 14 kilometers now. Can't remember. 14, I think it was miles. Um, it seemed to be absolutely banging along. Brilliant bit of kit. Anyway, so yeah, field 43. So as we come up on field 43, just on the left, first shoots are coming through the ground here as well. And what's interesting here is that the soybean here is coming through, and I looked up and thought, oh no, the corn's not growing. But the corn has come through the ground completely differently. It would do, it's a different crop.
there you go so the first bits of corner through the ground as well and there's our join this is where I didn't know if we were going to get any hybrids soy corn or sort of maize beans or something <laughs> a maize beans right anyway over to where I was get the beacon off got to it didn't do very far along there we go let's just open up Awesome. I think it's the same boom width. Yeah. Pretty sure it is. Look at that. And away we go. Now I realise it's more spraying. Well, not everyone wants to see more spraying, but like I said, this is uh, Oakfield Arable Contracts investing in the future. just thinking what to do because this tank is going to run out really quick and I'm going to be backwards and forwards to the farm like nobody's business especially on the, I mean this is the biggest field on the farm let's be honest it's huge um, on any of the other fields I'll be fine but this is going to require a few reloads I'm just trying to think if there's something I could use I mean regardless if I use something else and fill it with fertilizer I've got to go backwards and forwards with that rather than this and this is self-propelled so realistically I might as well just go backwards and forwards with this it's going to be a few trips but It does help if you don't leap out of the cab while you're in the middle of doing something. Why am I doing this, you ask? Well, if I run along, like I say, because you can't turn part of the boom off, if I carry on going straight like this, only the first third of the boom here will be spraying this end will be spraying onto the crop that needs spraying the other two thirds of the boom are going to be spraying into the ground that's already been sprayed it's a complete waste of spray so every now and again if you get a strip like this come on sideways I mean it's kind of obvious it, I, I assume everyone does it I, you know. if you don't there you go little top sip 
It's a little bit time consuming, but it's just for doing those fiddly bits around the outside, anything that gets missed. Once this bit's done, um, I can just set the worker off and away we go. And I can focus my attentions over to field 7, we'll get a new field. The uh, My proposal for going and cutting people's grass was met with mixed feelings, I think. People didn't like the idea of me going through hedges and stuff like that. Um, at least if I buy field 7, it's an actual field. Field 9 still isn't ready yet, that's going to require another growth stage. I thought it would be ready now because we're into mid-summer, but I think that's going to take a little bit longer. So I thought the option to go to a field that's already ready might not be a bad idea, although that could probably do with spraying, couldn't it? Thinking about it. Maybe that's the option, so I'll go over there and do that, spray that first. I can come back and do this later on today. Um, and then depending on the episode length, obviously then we're going to be in two selling size bales that we've got. So we've got some silage. And then when we hit, I think, beginning of autumn, or maybe it's midsummer, the price of sheep should be low. Um, I have been offered a load already. That's the point, actually. I don't know if I need to, do I? Because I'm going to be given some. I don't know if you can have an advance on sheep, can you? Because I think that might be a bit, a bit much, an advance on sheep. We'll see. This is fiddly, isn't it? But I'm not wasting an absolute ton of fertiliser doing it. I know I've said this before, I know it's come down under fertiliser, but I, I like to think of it in-game as the pellets, the hard stuff is fertiliser. I know this is fertiliser, but I try and think of this as kind of pesticides or something like that instead. Um, generally speaking. Anyway, right, I'm going to head this up to, or over to field 7. We'll buy it, spray it, and I'll get some... I can get this back over here to get my work. I can get some mowing done. I'll see you over there in a minute. Right, so we've just come through Cobley, over the river. One of the workers has brought the Massey up with the mowers already. They're keen to get started. Where's the field? Oh, we go. And it was just up the hill, we just wasn't sure where. So, field seven. He's just here. 15,000. That's a no-brainer. Let's buy that. It's not a bad size field, actually, for 15,000. Oh, I'm just thinking, will I get through the gate with this? Not from that angle, I won't. Oh, there you go. It's going to be an interesting proposition, isn't it? Luckily, because these fields are fields, I know that sounds ridiculous, but not just grass areas, you normally get a bit of an overlap or uh, a boundary around the outside. So that should change colour, there we go. It won't take long to spray this. This field will be mowed and tedded, then the hay will be windrowed and it will be stored. Now we have got quite a low bit of scrub there, and there's a lot of grass over there. That's next to... is it hill, hilltop or hillside stores? Hilltop or hillside, I can't remember now. Um, I wonder if I can cut that. Maybe I can offer my services in the mowing industry. Who knows? Oh, actually, that doesn't need spray, does it? The field bit ends just there. Swing that round. So it won't take very long at all. I 
well thank you for this Jason, it's a brilliant bit of kit bit of advertising for Oakfield Arable Contracts as well down by the river Bit. There you go, that made incredibly light work of that. Brilliant. That can go back over to field 43 and continue. And I'll get in here with the mowers. Put the beacon on. In case anyone comes down the road. Now until the mowers are down, this is very front heavy. And before anyone asks, this does get done like this in the real world. Those mowers do connect together. I've seen YouTube videos of it. This is where I'm going to see whether or not the uh, tether matches up with the mowers. So what I want is the front mower open. Lowered. Actually, I'll raise it first. Second one. Butterfly mower down. Right, so. Put that down together. Okay. Now open that. It's gone sideways, I don't know. If I'm lucky, let's turn it on. This will absolutely match the mowers. That could not be better. That's pretty much perfect. Right, well that's the mowing situation sorted then. That's going to make life a little bit easier. It, like I said, no downside is it doesn't mean it's going to tie up a tractor again and the bigger of the tractors. Mind you, on the other side of that, I have just been given the use of that great big Challenger. So, every cloud. It's got a mind of its own, that rear tether. Okay, fantastic. Right, now down the corner. Always in the trees where possible. Think of a court on a route. There we go. Brilliant. What I'm going to do now is just finish off the last bits and tidy up. I jumped ahead a little bit because, you know, mowing is mowing. I don't want people to get bored. I hope you enjoyed the music um, editing section on Field 21 earlier. I just want to thank uh, Nick Welker for that from Welker Farms Inc. Watched a video of his today on how he edits his videos together, his drone camera footage. Um, and it seemed so simple and obvious, I guess, but. Um, I took a few hints and tips and I think it worked really well. I'm very happy with the results, so thanks for that, Nick. Very, very helpful indeed. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. There's plenty more to come on Oakfield Farm. Got to sell those silage bales. I'm going to have to get a, collect a load more uh, hay and grass. Fields are looking good. Field 43 needs spraying. Um, and then we're into harvest season, animals, all sorts going on. So, if you have enjoyed it, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do.
thanks for watching.